Hello, the title of this talk is Mixing in Non-Quasi-Random Groups. My name is Emanuele Viola and this is joint work with Timothy Gowers. This work is about products in groups and this topic and our results in particular can be presented and approached from two points of view which are really two sides of the same coin. One is communication complexity and the other one is mixing. This being a computer science conference, we are going to start with uh, the communication complexity viewpoint. In this talk, I'm going to focus on the results in the paper. However, this area has connections uh, that go beyond our results, uh, in particular to uh, some long-standing challenges in communication complexity and I just want to, to point you to this survey here which is on my home page if you want to find out more about these connections and other aspects of this area. But for now we're going to focus on some very concrete problems and as a warm-up let us consider the problem in which you have a finite group G you should think of G as being finite but large, so all the results in this group, in this talk, we're going, are going to be asymptotic with the size of the group. And you have two parties, Alice and Bob, and each party receives an input, so Alice receives X and Bob receives Y, and their goal is to decide if the product, the product of X and Y is equal to 1 and they're allowed to use randomness. So this warm-up case has a very simple solution. Uh, Bob can compute in his head the inverse of y with no communication and then the parties can simply check if x times y is equal to 1 by checking if x is equal to y inverse which can be done with constant communication using the protocol for equality. Things get more interesting if you have three parties and this is the focus of this work. So now we have Alice, Bob and Chloe and they each receive an input and we work in the basic number in hand model so Alice knows X, her input, Bob knows Y and Chloe knows Z. And again, they want to decide if x times y times z is equal to 1. Now, the communication complexity here depends on the group G. If the group is a billion, then it can be shown that the communication is constant. This result can be generalized to the case in which the group is almost a billion. And almost a billion is defined to mean that the group has an a billion subgroup of constant index. So a question that I want to highlight is whether this implication here can be also reversed. Is it true that the communication is constant if and only if the group is almost a billion? We don't know how to prove it and it seems that it's an interesting question. It would be a nice characterization of almost a billion groups. Moving forward, there is another class of groups uh, uh, which is known as quasi-random and that was introduced by Gowers. And for these groups, the communication is large. Okay, how large depends on how quasi-random the group is, but you can think of it as being a growing function. So in this work, we're going to consider groups which are in between quasi-random and almost a billion. And we're going to study this communication problem in those groups. Let me give you some examples of such in-between groups. The first example is the affine group. That's a group of 2 by 2 matrices which have entries A1, A2, 0 and a 1 
where a1 and the 2 are in the finite field with q elements and a1 is not zero okay again this group is neither almost abelian uh, nor quasi random the other two examples are natural generalizations of uh, the group that is perhaps dearest to computer science which is the hypercube with bitwise addition so the first generalization is the so-called finite lamp lighter group which can be expressed uh, as a z2 Rith product uh, Zn. More concretely, the elements of the group are n bits x1, x2, dot 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 xn, and a shift s, which is an element of uh, Zn. Okay, and you can think of the elements as corresponding to n lamps, and each lamp can be on or off, and the shift s corresponds to the position of the lamp lighter who's in the process of switching the lamps if you want to multiply an element like the one we described by another element uh, you do as follows first you shift the bits x size by s you just rotate them by s and then you sum coordinate wise okay uh, the third and final example of in between groups uh, is that of product groups G of the type H to the N where H is not abelian think for example H uh, has constant size okay so again uh, this is a generalization of the hypercube which corresponds to H just being uh, Z2 so a main result in this paper is lower bounds and some upper bounds for the communication complexity of deciding if x times y times z is equal to 1 in these groups so if the group is affine is the affine group then we get uh, that the communication complexity is theta log the size of the group so here we get matching lower and upper bounds if the group is uh, the lamp lighter group then we also get matching lower and, and upper bounds and now the bounds are of the form theta log log the size of the group if you have a product group h to the n where h is constant and h is non abelian then we prove that the communication complexity is always at least omega log n and here an open question is whether this bound can be strengthened to theta of n and now I can turn to the viewpoint of mixing so different types of groups uh, mix in uh, different uh, ways um, so there are those groups uh, which do not mix and for example almost a billion groups are such groups uh, what do I mean by not don't mix uh, I mean that uh, you can find uh, uh, two distributions X and Y over the group which are independent and have high entropy but if you multiply the distributions which means you sample from x and you sample from y and you output the product you get something which is very far from uniform so it does not mix to uniform and here and later by high entropy you can just think for example that each distribution is uniform over a constant fraction of the group okay so again in this case you can find the two distributions which are independent high entropy over the group but if you multiply them they don't mix they don't approach the uniform distribution over the group at the other end of the spectrum you have quasi random groups and here for every distribution x and y as above it turns out that x times y does become close to uniform in this work and next we are going to consider in between groups uh, 
these are groups where for every x and y as above, x times y doesn't necessarily get close to uniform, but still uh, it gets a little closer to uniform. And a, a main conceptual contribution of this work uh, is what do we mean by closer to uniform? And specifically, we introduce a new definition of mixing. We say that uh, a group G mixes via a distribution of functions f from the group to the group if the following holds. First of all, this distribution should not be trivial, which means that for every x, it is unlikely that f of x is equal to x. And second, for every distribution x and y as before, so they are independent high entropy distributions over the group, the distributions x and y and the distribution f of x and y are close in statistical distance. In other words, when you multiply x and y, you get to a distribution which is uh, invariant under f. It does not change much if you apply f. And this is intuitively making the distribution closer to uniform because, of course, the uniform, di the uniform distribution would be invariant under any f. A main motivation for this definition is that it is sufficient for the communication complexity lower bounds. Okay, so what can we show? Well, uh, we can show again that almost a billion groups don't mix, even in this sense. On the other hand, if the group G is quasi-random, you do mix, and in fact you can take f to be a random function. And in our case, for our groups in between, you can get some f which are non-trivial, although they're not completely random. Let's see the examples. So in the example of the affine group, which again was the group of 2 by 2 matrices um, with entries A1, A2, 0, 1, then uh, you can mix uh, as follows. Uh, you can define f that given a matrix uh, sets the top right coordinate to a uniform element in the field. Okay, so given any element from the group, f just replaces the top right entry with a uniform element from the field. And this actually turns out to be the strongest possible mixing that you can have because uh, you cannot change the entry x1. The second example was the finite lamp lighter group, uh, which I remind you consists of elements um, with n bits and the shift s. And here the mixing uh, um, depends on the prime factorization of n. For simplicity, I'm going to consider that n is prime. In this case, you can mix in the following way. Given uh, an element consisting of n bits and uh, a shift s, you can mix by uh, replacing the bits with a uniform selection of bits uh, which have the same parity. So you can replace the x's with y's as long as they have the same parity. And this again is the strongest possible mixing because it can be shown that you cannot change the parity of the x's or the shift s. Finally, we get to the setting of product groups. And here again, I remind you that the mixing, no, uh, here, sorry, these were groups uh, um, of the type h to, to the n, where h is uh, not a billion, and you can think of h as being a constant size. And here the mixing is achieved by selecting a, a uniform coordinate i and setting that uniform coordinate to a, a uniform conjugate. Okay? So given a tuple of elements from h, you pick a random uh, element in the tuple and you set it to a uniform conjugate. In fact, under a condition on H, you can set that the uniform element uh, 
to a uh, to just a uniform element from u you can set hi to u but in general for elements for uh, h which are not uh, abelian you can only take a conjugate and here actually the error of this mixing is just uh, one over n uh, while conceivably could be you can have a mixing which is mu much smaller error and this error is somewhat inherent because um, in our approach because it comes from the choice of i which uh, could be a bad coordinate with probability 1 over n and the question that I asked at the beginning of this talk uh, can be now be phrased as follows uh, uh, is it true that the G mixes if and only if uh, it is not almost abelian? In other words, uh, if the group does not have a, an abelian subgroup of constant index. Okay, now I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining how we prove mixing and unsurprisingly um, we rely on non abelian Fourier analysis, uh, also known as representation theory so in brief um, if you have any function f from the group to the complex numbers uh, you have an inversion formula which says that uh, f of x the value of f at any point x uh, can be written as the sum over rho where rho ranges over irreducible representations uh, which I will abbreviate irreps irreps of the dimension of rho so rho is a matrix of dimension d rho times d rho times the trace of the Fourier coefficient of f at rho times rho x transpose and the Fourier coefficient is the expectation of f of x times the conjugate of rho x So, at a high level, you're writing f of x as, as a weighted sum of the Fourier coefficients where the weights are the dimensions of the reps. And every group has a trivial rep of dimension 1 and if you exclude that, the dimension of the other irreps uh, characterize interesting families of groups. Almost a billion groups uh, are those groups uh, which have irreps of bounded dimension. All dimensions are constant. Quasi-random groups um, have all dimensions which are large. You can think of them as being growing and our in-between groups uh, are mixed, right? Some dimensions are small, but some dimensions are large. To prove our results, uh, we establish uh, a lemma that says that uh, if X and Y are independent distributions over the group, then you can approximate the product distribution X and Y by irreps which have low dimensions okay you can truncate the Fourier expansion of x and y by keeping just the irreps which have low dimension and then we show two ways in which this lemma can be used one way is the so-called kernel method we show that uh, if you have an element in the group which is in the kernel of every irrep of small dimension then you can mix uh, simply by multiplying an element of the group by h so f of g is just the deterministic function which multiplies by h and again the, the idea is that because h is in the kernel of every low dimension irrep and since you can only you can approximate x y with irreps of low dimension uh, multiplying by h does not change x y uh, 
This method works for a find and the lamp lighter group, and this can be verified just by looking at uh, the irreps of these of these groups. Uh, but it does not work for product groups. For product groups, we do something different, still relying on the on the dilemma. The basic observation is that the irreps in uh, product groups H to the n are tensors of the irreps of H, and in particular the dimensions multiply. So because by the lemma we can approximate x, y by irreps with low dimensions, uh, we must have that we can approximate x, y with irreps that have dimension either 1 or that that depend on few coordinates, right? Because if you had many irreps of the basic group H, which have dimension larger than 1, and you tensorize, because the dimensions multiply, you will get a, an, an irrep for H to the n, which has very large dimensions, but the lemma allows us to ignore them. So we can approximate x, y with the reps which depend on few coordinates or possibly have dimension 1. Now remember that the mixing was by picking a uniform coordinate i and then setting that coordinate to a uniform conjugate. And the basic idea why this works uh, is that when you pick a random i, the approximation of x, y is unlikely to depend on i. So whether or not you pick this conjugate does not change the distribution. And this concludes our talk. Thank you.